um, the bank is not a retail bank, so uh, you do not have to think about us being in China, uh, servicing customers like, uh, you know, in terms of retail business. We are a full commercial bank. We serve our companies primarily by supporting them for um, either working capital or investment purposes. Uh, we provide them with multi-currency um, accounts uh, so that they can uh, go through settlement uh, transactions with us, payment cash management, trade services, and uh, the range of borrowing solutions. Uh, we have a trade finance desk. We try to interact on the trade flows between China and Italy, mostly, but not only. In fact, through relationships we developed with local Chinese banks, we managed to also uh, get a lot of business, trade-related business from China and the rest of the world. We also actually have an institutional role. Um, in fact, it's not just uh, uh, Italian companies, uh, the main goal of our business. We try to develop business with uh, top-tier Chinese names, uh, both corporates and financial institutions. These are just a list of products available. Uh, as you can see, they go from checking accounts to different kind of uh, uh, financing, uh, borrowing solution. We are engaged in project finance, uh, financing, uh, trade finance with all sorts of different kind of products. These are very uh, traditional products, and these are actually the ones that commercial banks like us, foreign banks doing business in China, are allowed to, uh, to carry on. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, the bank has an old tradition there. Uh, when I moved to China, I realized how strong uh, the ties were with uh, local institutions. Um, I have to say that uh, really, beginning 1990, uh, my predecessors, all Chinese people, managed to build up a very good network of uh, professionals that nowadays we still use for expanding and widening our uh, services to our customers. The bank obviously is strictly engaged in banking uh, services. However, when uh, companies approach the China market, most of the time they may ask additional support. They may need legal assistance. They may need to be introduced to Venice for marketing research or s something like that. Well, we have a very good network of professionals that we managed to build up over the course of the last few years. And these professionals are the ones that we refer to our clients in order to really uh, offer complete solutions for their needs. And uh, well, office facilities, I put it in there because sometimes what happens, there are companies interested uh, to expand in China. They come to China, they knock at our door, and they ask, can you do something for us? Can you help us to better understand the market? A very difficult market in some respect, but a very interesting one for the opportunities that gives uh, to companies in general. Well, sometimes we give them the chance to, uh, help meeting, to, to help meeting in our space. We have a beautiful conference room, and uh, you know, we just provide them with the office facilities, and uh, it's, a, it's a very simple way to be close to our customers and to understand better the issues. Sometimes we, we sit with them talking to Chinese counterparts, better understand how to interact with one another. We support also a lot of companies during Chinese event participation, such as trade fairs and any, anything that can be uh, organized. Uh, say for instance, during these days, as you well know, there is the Shanghai Expo. It just started at the beginning of May, and it will last until the end of October. You don't know how many companies are coming to China, came to China already. They're all companies that sometimes are simply curious to see the market, the ones that have not expanded in China yet. They come, they ask questions, uh, they're curious, they want to understand better the issues, and it's extremely interesting to see how uh, active the energy that comes out from a country that for sure it is now the number one emerging market in the world. And uh, well, I do not want to be too long, but uh, for sure uh, we have a unique franchise. 
I said earlier when we just started that Monte dei Paschi is the oldest bank in the world. You don't know how much strong disease in terms of uh, branding, uh, the appeal to Chinese people. I mean, when I say to, uh, when I have important meetings with uh, Chinese counterparts and I introduce myself as a representative of the oldest bank in the world, I really can see that uh, it, it picks up immediately a very strong attention from them. It, it brings them back in time eventually on when the Ming Dynasty <laughs> was in, in, in uh, 1472. That was the year when the bank was in Catholic. We have very strong marketing capabilities and analytical capabilities. We have, uh, by the way, uh, I said all my staff is Chinese, but it's also bilingual. Not only they speak English, but uh, some of them, especially the ones that are mostly customer oriented, speak very, very good Italian. And this is very important, uh, especially when dealing with Italian people. Uh, you know, sometimes Italians are a little bit lazy in speaking foreign languages, and uh, to be able to provide them with somebody, a local person that speaks fluent Italian, is a very good competitive advantage. And we're very proud to have on board very good professional people that not only know the banking industry, but know how to speak to people. And this is something extremely important. At least this is what I, I see when dealing with companies. Uh, the bank is obviously committed to China. China is a, nowadays is the, is the country where there, there is really the highest concentration of uh, Italian companies uh, doing business there. We have very uh, a high quality portfolio pipeline of short, medium, and long-term projects. And uh, you know, this is another statement that I thought was very uh, interesting, uh, just to tell you why BNPS in China. I just read the last sentence I wrote just to give you the strength uh, of its meaning. Because we provide the value to our clients at all times with the best quality service, the smartest, most creative solutions, flawlessly executed. Um, these are just some statistical numbers uh, that in a way backs up the, the, the reason why the bank, like many other banks, decided to be in China. I mean, the numbers in terms of absolute values are quite huge, but in terms of percentage, if you can see, there is still a lot to do. These are the total relative to uh, total China imports. Italy represents only 2.29%. China exports, of course, uh, are higher, 6.55%. Uh, the rest is shared between countries from the rest of the world. These are just another uh, slide just to give you an idea about the total amount of Italian companies that have a presence in China. But you know what is peculiar? We don't know. What is the number? Because something very funny is that companies, not necessarily when they come to China, uh, become members of uh, institutions like uh, the Chamber of Commerce. Not even the Italian Trade Commission is aware of all the Italian companies doing business there. Sometimes they incorporate with different names. And of course, it's impossible to understand who, who, who is behind the company itself. So the, the numbers that we have are, this is actually, a, um, it's not really updated. Uh, uh, maybe it's a few months old. But we understand that as of today, maybe something like in between. This is the unofficial number. 1,500 and 2,000 company, companies, Italian companies, uh, should have set up their presence in China. Of these, more than 500 are actually manufacturing, uh, manufacturing investments. Many others are simple, simple representative offices. And uh, the rest is all about trading companies. Usually they're incorporated either as a WUFIs, 100% uh, owned by the Italian parent companies, or joint ventures. These are the same numbers we saw before. These are our contacts. And uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm available to uh, answer any questions you may have. 
what I would like to do now is also uh, give you the chance to uh, um, give you a brief introduction about, since we're based in Brussels, I think it's important to give you a brief introduction about what Montepaschi Belgium is all about. I give just for a few minutes uh, the floor to Mr. Dirk Stewart, who is our treasurer here in uh, Brussels.